What's up, Sparrow Martin? Yo, we do what we want. How would you know? The California native regularly produces content for the UrbanDaily.com, NewsOne.com, and the Washington Post. He launched the Smugger.com, a life and style blog geared toward urban gentlemen, and he has a bachelor's degree in journalism from, you know what, the best Howard University. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Farrow Martin. I would implore you to, to, to stay active, stay in, involved in your politics. Because, you know, because you made it, the people that hip hop is representing has it. You know what I'm saying? And um, them people are still, they're still struggling, they're still, they're still um, trying to make it and they see you, you're going to be an industry person. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever you want to call it, one of those, oh, you one of them, you an industry old dude, you know what I'm saying? You Hollywood or, or, or whatever. So stay involved in your community, stay involved with the politics, but know that the politics do affect the music. Um, how would you, um, how would, how was your take on social media? Like when you, you build the social media brands, mm -hmm. how do you go about like, what's your best strategy for that that you've discovered? I'm doing that now, this inauguration <clears throat> thing. Um, one, you got to tap into to the databases that already exist. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're starting a new, okay, let's say you're a rapper, right? Who will be your rap name? Give me a rap name. Dodger. Dodger? Dodger. Dodger? Dodger, yeah. Dodger, yeah. like L.A. Dodgers. Yeah. All right, so Dodger is a new rapper, and he, he started from scratch. The thing that Dodger is going to have to do, create the page, whatever, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, Instagram. But Dodger, before he became Dodger, what's your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm? Yeah. Okay. Malcolm has friends. So, so Malcolm either going to have to turn his Twitter page into Dodger, or you're gonna have to convert all those people into, you know, mm -hmm. the following. It starts, it starts with you. Yeah. Then from there, you two right here, you, you, you his homeboys, you Dodgers, I don't know, best friends who's trying to be his manager. You probably mm -hmm. like, on some like, oh yeah, I'm your manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm your manager. So you could be the manager, and I'm the DJ, whatever. I'm just learning, I'm, I got me a, a DJ controller, but I'm gonna learn a DJ, I'm your DJ. So you got, so but now you got, what's your name? Eli. Eli? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Alaska. Alaska? Dope. Um, so we tap into DJ, and, I mean, Alaska and, and Eli's, mm -hmm. you know, tw yeah. and, and it just kind of go like that. Yeah. And then they're always promoting you, and it's just like, yo, um, Dodger's new album. Does it, you don't want to be one of them guys who just always sells, but you want to be very organic. He was just like, oh, check out my June joint. Then people people like you. Go. Oh, I'm at a, I'm, I'm performing. Go, ah, ah, ah. Check me out at, at Dodger DC, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'll follow you back, you know, whatever. And you're always, and then all your um, joints. I ain't got that. Never mind. But all your stuff has your, your, your Twitter handle on it. It has your Instagram handle on it. It has a website, you know what I'm saying? So if you're handing out, you handing out, uh, hell, you got these things. Can I look at this real quick? Mm -hmm. If you have things like this, this is marketing material. Yeah. Hold up some if you got some marketing material. You got a football. Does it have a website on that football? So they failed on that when they made that. This one. Okay. Marketing. <laughs> so they, but if you look at most of that stuff, they might have kystc.com on it. It might have TI's website on it. It might have, so you can do, you can put your Twitter handle if that's what you want to focus on. A lot of people, for whatever reason, don't want to make a website. Um, your artist site should have all your stuff, but it should just say like dodger.com or whatever it's going to be, right? Um, I am Dodger. I don't know. Whatever's going to be available. So you got to find something that's going to that's gonna be available that you can market consistently. Don't be like Twitter on I am Dodger, Instagram Dodger the guy, and then you're doing you know, inst you know YouTube is Dodger for life. You know you can't have four different drums. Try to find the if you're gonna be I am Dodger is you're gonna be your your, your 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 tag. Put that on all everything. If it's not available, find another tag. That's my that's one of my biggest. And it should be I am Dodger deep at I am Dodger dot com or something. You know what I'm saying? So. When you, when you, if you're on stage and you're trying to promote, yo, just find me. I am Dodger. You know what I'm, yeah. at I am Dodger, I am Dodger.com. It's easier to kind of brand it when it's consistent. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's one way to just, and then, you know, it's one fan a day at that point. Yeah. You know, just like you're trying to, you're trying to build your fan base, mm -hmm. it's one fan a day. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going a, I'm to a pay for the service and get 500 Twitter followers. Those are all robots. Yeah. You don't want them. 
because you're not going to get any traction anyway. Start hashtags, you know what I'm saying? Um, do a hashtag campaign. Have people like hold up stuff like, yo, I am Dodger. You know, hashtag I am Dodger, hashtag, and then you guys doing your shows, you're doing your your open mics, you're, you're doing your, your, your YouTubes, you know what I'm saying? And you're putting all that stuff, maybe you, you, you purchase something on Worldstar, you pay them the $700 or whatever they charge to, to kind of do your, you know, spin your stuff out. But if you're going to do a marketing campaign, unfortunately, as how many artists are in here? Do you have any artists? Do we have any people who manage artists? Do we have people who work for a label that work with artists? Okay. Um, there's a few of y'all in here. So I will say, um, you might have to spend some money. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's just not, you're not going to come up to me like, yo, I'm the hottest rapper ever. Here's my CD. I'm never going to listen to that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know, don't tag me on Twitter. They do that a lot on, yeah. on the radio. Mm -hmm. Yo, how did you, and, and you're always, the, you're always the hottest dude. Dodger is always the hottest guy ever to live. You know, I'm just like, I, I if I haven't heard of you, there's a, there's a reason for that. Because I keep my ear, because what I do is I have a lot of DJ friends. And it's just like, yo, who's hot? Who's coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's that dude. Now, if you hit me and I heard you, it, it's going to go. It's kind of like if you're a female, right? There's a whole thing called about street street harassment, right? Think about when you just walking down the street. Hey, ma. Hey, ma. What up? What up? You know. But if you meet somebody through somebody, hey, you know, you're a little less, you're a little more friendly. It's the same thing. Think like a beat. That, someone gave me that, uh, gave me that uh, analogy. If you're a rapper and you want to get attention, think like you're, a, think like a female. You know, you trying to get someone's attention. You trying to get somebody a job or something. Pretend they're a female. You trying to get their attention. You got to be very creative because unfortunately, there's they get it all day. Like I took the, I, I, we took the KYS truck down to the car wash just to get washed. One of the dudes washing, washing the car, pulled out a damn demo, like a CD, like, yo, I got one. I'm like, did you just have this on your person? Because you knew we was coming up. So, you know, it, it happens so often, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like old girl who was walking down the street got hollered at a hundred times or something in, like, like, four hours. That's what it's like once you get into the quote-unquote industry, if they knew who you are, right? Um, so... And I'm telling you guys that from the outside looking in. So if you guys are trying to get in, it don't matter if you have a resume, if you have a CD, if you have, if you're a photographer and you have a portfolio, it doesn't matter if you're trying to get somebody's attention. Uh, think about it in a creative way, where you're not you're not being a creep. You know what I'm saying? And don't do it like, yo, I'm hot. Give, here's my CD. Check it out. Uh -uh. You know, you got to think, maybe take them to dinner or something. I don't know. It's, it has to be a little, you got to do a soft, you got to kind of soft lobby. You know what I'm saying? All right, who has another question, though? You got involved with, were the things that you did um, while in undergrad to help kind of um, jumpstart your career? I networked with my, with my people on my campus. I think Howard, believe it or not, I, I swear to God, maybe. 50%, half of the, it almost seems like this way, but a, a good chunk of the industry in New York is from Howard. It is. If you go to New York, it's just, oh yeah, I went to Howard, you know what They find out you went to Howard, there's gonna be five other people, oh yeah, I went to Howard. Hey, you know, they start taking you around, like if you do an internship at one of the labels or something, you can be like, yeah, yeah, this is such and such from Howard. Oh yeah, I went to Howard, such and such went to Howard. Oh yeah, well, so you just got a bunch of people who already went to Howard. Um, but I think what we started at was um, just, Knowing the people in this room, like especially like organizations like EPP, I was part of an organization called Cover to Cover, um, which was like for magazines and stuff. You know, they used to do New York trips and all that. Um, you know, whatever your local organizations are that's, that's kind of geared towards what you're trying to do, that's a great place to start while on campus. Um, because if you're trying to make a film, you got a bunch of film majors, you got some acting majors over here, you know what I'm saying? You connect, because all these people are going to be people who's going to be over here one day. That's just, that's just what it is. They replace us. Maybe I, hopefully I get bumped up higher or I start my own thing or whatever, and someone got to take my spot. So it's going to be like one of these people in this room or some other room similar to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, work with like local artists. Lo you know, find out, like especially with doing Howard Homecoming, one thing that is a big takeaway is how uh, the Yard Fest. That was a big thing for me, because I used to get that backstage and I used to connect with everybody like that. You know what I'm saying? Man, the night one used to be back there all the time, so that's why I met him, you know, Wale be back there. And we didn't, he, Wale didn't know who that Wale was. We were just back there, and you, 
But my point is, whoever it is today is gonna to be someone else tomorrow, right? And, and, and it's a growth thing, because even um, what Sydney and all them gonna tell you, they were all new guys kicking in with other new guys, and then all the new guys become the current guys. And then, the, you know what I'm saying? Then they become the old heads, and we become the old heads, and eventually we're gonna phase out. Um, but I think for you, the, the main thing is just connect with connect with, with, with the people around you, you know what I'm saying? Take advantage of, like you've been doing, internships, you gotta understand um, fabrics and cuts and, and how to sew and all that, you know, all that stuff. You know what I mean? You gotta understand fashion, trends, but you gotta know that while in college. You gotta understand the trends of your industry. Read Billboard magazine, read, um, Ray, what was it, uh, what's some other ones that's kind of following? Um, women's Wear Daily, you know what I'm saying, if you're a fashion person. But follow the blog, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's the main, is everybody leaving? Are we, am I born? Oh, yeah, uh, send people up. Um, um, so yeah, that's, that's the main thing. Like stay abreast on your industry, because like for me, perfect example. Get, coming out of Howard, I came out in 08. What I did was I, I knew that the industry of my, of my uh, I knew the trends of my industry. I knew the magazine industry was falling out. Bob had just closed. Um, I think King Magazine was closing at that time. It was just a bunch of just magazines just going down, right? And I was interning at uh, Giant Magazine at the time. Actually, I didn't intern at Giant Magazine at the time. It was, my magazine just closed down. I had a magazine that we were doing, and we gave, like, Trey Songz his first cover shoot. We did, because uh, his manager's from D.C., so we knew him and all that. And so I gave him his first cover shoot. We did all this stuff. And then what happened was um, I, was making, I was making about $100,000 every three months. We was pulling in a lot of a lot of money, right? And we were getting distributed all up and down the East Coast. But what happened was we ended up going bankrupt because we didn't have enough. We had we had a bunch of money going out and not enough money coming in, right? And we had printing costs. It was all this goofy stuff going on. So I had dropped out of Howard at, at one point. I thought I was dead. I was like, oh shit, this is what Diddy did. I'm gonna go do that. I ain't finished school. And I was just like, I'm not even going the next semester because I was getting money. Well, I felt like I was getting money. But I had a lot of expense. Don't 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 get it twisted. There was a lot of money going in, but a lot of money going out. Um, so at that time, at that time, um, I, w I felt like we ran it like a. I didn't have a lot of industry experience. I didn't have a lot of structured um, industry experience where I worked for a magazine or a music label or whatever. You know, it was just me just kind of grinding it out. You know, sleep so I you know sleep when I die type. No days off, one of those, you know how you guys have that attitude of, yo, I'm just gonna do this, you know. But it's like you you running your own label, but you never work for a label, you know what I'm saying? So when you get into label issues, a lot of it is financial, it becomes about accounting, account, you know, accountability and accounting at the same time. You know, I didn't take no business courses, it was just like, you know, we just running this job, I knew how to write. So we, we were good on that, I knew how to hustle and get, get dope editorial, but I, the business end wasn't taken care of. So what happened was, Long story short, magazine shuts down. So I'm out here, pockets like this, you know, all my money gone. It was not all my money, but I lost a lot of my money. Um, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna go back into school. So I went back to Howard and I interned for Giant Magazine. Um, but what I did was, so I say all this to say, I followed the, the I started researching where my, my industry was going because I knew we were starting, I was dealing a lot with digital, digital stuff, building websites for my magazine and stuff. And I, I was following how all these magazines were closing down. Like I said, Bob was closing down, this, that was, they all closing down. So, and I was looking, I was like, Radio One had just bought at the time Black Planet. It was this big thing that maybe your parents were on. Um, at the time, they, they, they still had a little cash, I guess. They had some, 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 some things. And then, so what Radio One was doing, they had owned, see, Radio One didn't own a TV station, they own TV One now. And now they own, uh, a bunch of websites. They're the biggest digital platform that targets African Americans right now. Um, they're bigger than you know uh, Mogulin, which has Bossip and all that, right? And BET. Um, but at the time, they only owned radio stations. They owned like 50 something radio stations, and that's it. But they wanted to get into the digital realm, the digital part of the industry. So they bought they bought a stadium, if you will, in Black Planet, which had still had five million people on it. So what they did is they took all those people who were still on Black Planet and they launched a bunch of different properties. Urban Daily, um, Hello Beautiful, News One. I don't know if you ever, if you guys heard some of these, these sites. Um, but at the time, I'm looking at the trades, I'm like, Radio One just bought Black Planet. Oh, they're going into digital. I want to get into digital because I think that's where my industry is going. 
So I, I, I hit up uh, the, I, I did some research. The, um, I loved, at the time, Giant Magazine. And I don't know if you guys ever read this magazine, but it was one of my favorite magazines coming out. I was like, yo, I want to work for this magazine, but I want to do it on the digital side. So I, I, and I looked at the mass head, and it was this guy named Rashawn Hall. He's one of my, my, my good friends now, but he was the online editor of Giant Magazine at the time. So what I did was, I hit him on Facebook. I was like, I was Rashawn Moore, or Rashawn Hall. I friended him, and I just, you know, I stopped his life for like, for like two days. And I just looked about everything about him, I read about him, and I was like, yo, I wanna be, I wanna intern for you. And I just hit him up on like Facebook chat or something. He was like, yeah, come through. I don't know, cool. And I just come up, he interviewed me, hired me as an intern or whatever, so I was, and I was, what I did, is I would take classes here in DC for, I stacked my, 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 my schedule, so I would take classes here for three days, uh, cause we had to do mandatory gym, you guys do that at School of C. So what I would do is miss like the Tuesday class and just double up on, on Thursdays or something like that. So, but I would, I would take the bus from here to New York every week and I would stay in New York. I would, I would go up there like on a, let me see, I would take classes Monday, Wednesday, I think Monday and Tuesday or something like that, and, th and Wednesday, and then I would leave right after Wednesday and I would go to New York, I think Thursday and Friday, that's how it was. I think I just did a two-day internship. So I was in New York Thursday, and I just go straight from, I catch like the early mega bus or something, and I, with my little bag, and I just roll it over, go straight to the office in New York, and then I go and crash in one of my friend's couches, you know, get up, get dressed, take my little bag back to the office for Friday, and I'll, I'll do that thing, you know what I'm saying? I just do that every week, and I just buy tickets. I'd use my refund check to just buy tickets, instead of spending on everything else. And that's the way I kind of hustled for like six months. And then I was about to graduate, then they hired me. I was an editorial assistant and I was like, yeah, I'm back in. You know what I'm saying? And then I just worked my way up. Now I'm the, where I'm at now, as far as Radio One. Oh, actually, my magazine closed. I, my magazine closed, so I got let, I got let go. So I became, um, I came back to DC. I was like, oh man, I ain't got no, yeah, you know, nothing to do. And um, matter of fact, the School of C, they were looking for, they, they recommended me, because they knew the stuff I was doing here at Howard, for this fellowship. AARP was, an, and I ended up becoming a national correspondent for the black press. That's where that whole footnote where I used to, and I, like I said, I covered Obama, I did all these interviews with all these, these, these and I got my, my, my reporting chops from that, from that gig. That for about a year and a half. But, um, New York called me back. They were like, yo, we need you to come back to take over, um, the Urban Daily, so I was doing stuff for the Urban Daily, then eventually they sent me back here for DC to oversee the digital content, you know, digital content here. So that's kind of the, you know, it was just about the hustle, you know what I'm saying? And just knowing what I, knowing where I need, you always gotta play like 10 moves ahead. If you ever play chess, um, and if you don't play chess, the way it works, you gotta know your moves 10, 10 moves ahead. You don't need to wait for this person to make a move to know what your move is. Now, if he makes, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find if this if, if, if the situation goes this way, you already can go this way or this way. You already know, you already planned out where you're trying to go. Like I'm trying to get to the back of that room. I know I can go here, I know I can go here. Now if she gets up and blocks me, I know I can go over here. So I always have, that's the way I kind of played the game. The game of this professional game that we, that we play is you gotta know your, if you know that this door might be closing, you gotta already have another out. Cause I already knew that Giant Magazine might be closing pretty soon. So I was already trying to line up the next move, you know what I'm saying, and figure out what I need to do. But then I was always trying to get back, you know what I'm saying? So it always worked for me. Like, even with this mayor thing that I'm doing now, maybe my next move might be into politics. So I'm already got, I got the biggest fish in the city, not named Barack Obama. I'm handling their, their account. I'm doing my own thing at this point. Like I started my marketing, digital marketing agency. I already got big clients. You know, we got everything that we're doing for Radio One. We got big corporate clients. We got the mayor. That's on my resume right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm building that myself and instead of, because what I found out, Radio One made $10 million off me last year. I didn't make $10 million. I got a fraction of that. But if I did the same thing I'm doing for other companies, I would take that whole $10 million for myself. You understand? So you're working for yourself. That's important. Um, as far as music industry, it's important that you do own your own stuff. Own your publishing. Run your own company. If you're an artist, own your own publishing company so you can pay yourself twice. Because if you know about songwriting, you know that um, you get a mechanical royalty if you, the half of it goes to the publishing company. So if you own the publishing company, you get half of that regardless. Then maybe, uh, you know, other half goes to other people. Then you can still get that as a songwriter. So you'll get paid twice as a songwriter and as the publishing, uh, the publishing company owner. So if you know things like that, 
you make better business decisions. So I think, take a class over the next door, the School of B. Understand the business of what you're doing. I, I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of us get kind of caught up in the, we, we, we try to romanticize what the industry is. You try to romanticize, oh yeah, I just want to go this, that, and the third, but you're still working for people. It's no different than working at McDonald's where McDonald's is caking off you, but you flipping the burgers. You know what I'm saying? You can make the best burgers ever. It don't matter. You still get paid $7.25 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's about ownership at this point, especially in the music and the creative field, because you're creative. The suits don't understand you, and that's the problem where music is where it is today, because suits try to squeeze the creativity out of us, and or out of you guys, and they don't pay you for it, or they just want you to keep making that same hit. Oh, we need a club hit. Oh, get us off. Go, go work with who, whoever's the hottest. Go, go work with Mike Will made it. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you rock with Mike Will, he's going to give you that club hit. But yo, John, you, you, from, you from Alaska, and you sounding like you from a Atlanta, and you don't do that right. You know what I'm saying? So there's no credibility. So you have a lot of these older artists that's trying to hang on. You know, these Busta Rhymes type artists. Busta Rhymes is my man, but when they get older, it kind of gets pitiful. You know what I'm saying? Where they try to hang on. Because eventually, Kendrick Lamar is going to get old, and he's going to be trying to make a hit. Like, I still need a hit, you know? You know, um, he's going to try to make a, I don't know. What's, what's the name of the song he got right there? But you know, I or some shit, you know. But that's that's what it is, man. It's know, you, know whatever, you, if you're trying to be a fashion design, you know, whatever, or you're trying to get on the PR, own your own PR business. Because the person that that owns the PR business, she has one client with a retainer who, who pays her 2000 a month, but guess what? She has 10 damn clients. That's 2000 a month times 10 times 12. You see what I'm saying? She's caking right now. Now if you now if you hire people and then you can use that money to hire people under you, they all got clients. So you it's, it almost become a pyramid scheme in regards to the way it works. Because if I'm I got 10, I can't handle 10 clients by myself. But if I hire you, you, and you, I split up those clients. Each of you guys bring on six clients. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting paid off of all the clients that they got. So now I have a full agency and I represent 25 people. And they all paying me a retainer between two to ten thousand dollars a month. Understand the business? So if I do a marketing company like I'm doing, I'm handling, I'm handling some of these contracts. Um, it don't matter if it's entertainment based or not. If you, you could be a church. I'm charging you. I'm charging you. You pay me for my expertise. We have, and then I bring on videographers. I bring on writers. I bring on marketing experts. And then we, we hire them. And then they do whatever they need to do. And then I pay them. But at the end of the day, I'm doing the land of the contract, right?